Hi, I'm Quincy Acklin with Hackerspace Charlotte, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the compressed air rockets that we made. So, without further ado, here we go. Um, to start off with, this is sort of a standard design that we like. Um, it's the primary shape for most of our compressed air rockets, uh, uh, launchers that we're using. We have a, a Schrader valve, much higher rating, pressure rating than the standard uh, valve stems that you would get. Um, valve stems are only about 65 pounds unless they're high pressure and then they're about 100 110 pounds um, this can handle considerably more pressure it's for general purpose all your inlets you know 300 plus psi um, and then of course we use the sprinkler valve um, with a 9 volt battery taped to it here make our connections in there come back to the, uh, the sort of spec uh, little launcher um, and uh, this works great um, we've got uh, threads here with a, a nipple uh, threads here running around to threads. We actually switch from male to female as to what uh, what the connecting pipe is So we have a few more options on on how we uh, configure this and how much uh, Storage uh, we have on the launcher um, and kids. They just love to hit that button They just can't get enough um, Although there is one thing that we've discovered that uh, might be a little bit better than than this button right here and that would be if you were to maybe um Maybe say fire up a, a missile launch switch, flip it open, hit your switch, and then launch this guy and uh, keep launching because this one actually has an Arduino inside. Let's go ahead and uh, turn that off. We can control how long we open the sprinkler valve with this dial right here. And um, we will uh, set it up so that we can select which rocket to fire on our encoder. Currently not connected though. This just tells us that the system is on. And then when we arm the system, we put power onto the launch rails that is then signaled through the Arduino via this button. So we want to make sure, I mean this really is a practical safety matter. We don't want power on the launch rail in case there's a glitch. Um, uh, and the Arduino does something funky. So anyway, this actually powers the launch rail um, that goes out the back, and of course we can multiplex that, or Charlie switch, Charlie plex it, whatever, um, to to power it to a, a bunch of different uh, sprinkler valves. As it's set up right now, there's only the uh, the one switch in there with a single transistor. Um, it's a little jam packed in there with wires everywhere. Um, this was just our hasty little fix. We needed to uh, uh, mount our Arduino. You know, a little hot glue does the trick. Um, ben Hack would love that, I think. Um, or prove anyway. A little breadboard back there to, to make all our connectors, and then we only have to uh, connections, and we only have to solder up here. Um, <laughs> nine volt battery powering it all, and of course, in case anybody was to stumble across this, you know, thank you, uh, Make Magazine, for supplying those stickers. Um, and so that's our little switch. Um, and uh, you know, who can who can resist, you know, both the missile switch and the missile switch and the big red launch button so it's uh, it's great and then um, what we also did we played around just for fun to see you know how small could we make it and um, three quarter inch really um, is just a little bit too small we need a bigger reservoir which we can do we can this is a three quarter thread here and we have a three quarter thread over here as well so I could actually take this this tube right here and put it on right right here or um, for this guy, if I wanted to swap this completely and make this a larger unit too, I can actually unscrew it right here and swap it with this larger shape unit here. If you actually take a look, well, let's go ahead and push this down. These two are just about identical, right? The only difference is that one stops there. This one keeps on trucking around in that larger shape. So um, it just depends on the volume of air that you're trying to work out. And there's a lot of good math to play with the pressure volume equations to see just how much energy you've got stored in the system and how well you can utilize that energy um, as opposed to the terminal velocity. These rockets, you can, you can crank up the pressure and they'll start off a lot faster, but they bleed off that speed way fast. Um, so um, some other features to talk about with this. Again, we talked about the valve, a um, little higher pressure. These valves can be had for $1.50. Um, the bushing that's brass that the, this one eighth inch valve screws into is about three dollars. That's a bit of a bummer. We can get those for under a buck in PVC, but you have to order them 
online. That's a bit of a bummer. Um, and then threaded pipe here. Um, we're using one inch uh, valves in this case. It's what I had on hand after doing my sprinkler system at home. Um, and here, this is a, a handy little tidbit. We're coming out um, with a street uh, elbow. So it's threaded male on this side and female on this side. And then we do another one of those street elbows right here. Again, male threads here, female threads here. And that leaves us with a fully articulated launch rod. I can turn it up here because it's just threaded in. And then of course I can rotate it over as well because that's just threads. And rotate it back and then back down. So you can get a compact sort of form there. And that was the driving driving force. Ben uh, and a couple of the other hackers here at Hackers for Charlotte came up with this this basic layout. It was slightly different, but the idea of this rectangle that um, had all the, the, the important bits on the inside of the rectangle to keep them sort of safe and secure and still provide good storage. And then playing with that, um, I went out with my kids and uh, we did a little science in the park and we wrote down some performance numbers as we switched the size of the launch tubes. We actually uh, just ran a separate pipe off the side um, of varying lengths, one foot, two, four, nine feet, to see how big an impact that had. And what we ended up with, well, <laughs> about one foot is all you need. Um, with that size right there, you can, um, you can really do most of the, the launches you want, whether it's these little these little tiny uh, paper and tape rockets, these guys will go 200 feet easily on this tube over here. Now granted it has to be at about um, 75 pounds on this tube, whereas with this tube at 20 pounds you'll get close to the same distance. And again, volume, a lot more volume. So, um, uh, But anyway, there's again uh, a lot of test data on that and then the question was how long should you leave it open? Um, and because this one doesn't need all that pressure to go out, so if we were to store some of that or not leave the valve open so long, and of course that led to our, our little launch box where we can control um, much more precisely how long we keep the valve open. And we can actually get two or three launches um, out of this no problem just by closing the valve in a decent amount of time. So as we move on to bigger uh, storage tanks, like an actual um, compressor tank, we want to make sure that we're being efficient and not leaving the valve open too long, and this let us get some test data to figure out just how big that is. Um, but this guy, um, even though it's a little small, as long as you run the pressure up on this guy, you're pretty good. And so we'll typically do 110 pounds on here, um, and uh, that'll, uh, that'll put us in the same class as, uh, as that guy over there, uh, particularly with these little guys. And um, just to give you an idea, if we were to pressure this guy up, um, uh, a good, a good safe uh, indoor <laughs> pressure. Um, here we are at 30 pounds, and I don't have this one hooked up to a switch. But one of the convenient things about these sprinkler valves is you can just turn, and they'll launch. So we're not going to see this because it's going to disappear. But um, and that just hit the wall there on a nice gentle arc. So 30 pounds, and this is an indoor um, launch tube. 30 pounds on this guy, and you're you're yeah, mom's not going to be happy. And 30 pounds on this, and Dad's not going to be happy either. So, um, but again, you can run this guy up to 100 pounds, take him outside, and chase it all the way across the other end of the park. So, um, just a couple of the designs that we're doing um, here at the hackerspace. And let me uh, turn on a light and swing around and show you. Um, not a CNC machine or a large bag of glow sticks. This is, by the way, a large bag of glow sticks. We'll be doing fireless fireworks tomorrow. But this was uh, ah, this was the original launcher uh, that I made after seeing a uh, Rick's article, Make Magazine. Um, very cool. You can see we followed the 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 basic the basic plan. We have our two inch T down here. Um, again, I swapped uh, an actual Schrader valve and adapted it in um, so that I didn't have to run that long hose and I didn't I just didn't have a, a bike tire that was recommended at the time and I didn't really know about those uh, tire valves. Um, so anyway, and Ace Hardware had that. It was like five bucks. I've since found them online. Home Depot, a dollar uh, forty-nine a pop. So much better deal there. Um, then we put the batteries inside of this tube, and originally I just had the, the button up here, um, but it was kind of big and awkward, and kids like, like this one. Um, and uh, we had some massive heat shrink tubing, so at some point one of the guys here put that on. Um, we, of course, also keep, um, uh, this is a one-inch valve, and so we adapt down to three-quarter and then half and everything, so we can swap out our pipes. Um, one, one difference that you may note is that this guy is kind of standing up without all that 
wood and everything else. And we do that via this, this T. This was a, a, an idea that Ben came up with where he just split one in half, put it on, and then zip tied it back together and it grabs tight enough that this piece doesn't really move and I can, I can adjust the angle to whatever I want and it'll hold it for me. So that's kind of uh, convenient. The other thing, I went ahead and instead of just sticking a piece of two inch pipe in there, I went ahead and put the bushing in with this one inch to one and, uh, one and a quarter adapter. And then I can actually unscrew this piece and unscrew this, unscrew this piece, swap them out so that this one's holding the, the system up and then I can launch with this one. And I can either make really big rockets to put over here, um, but that's a lot more wind resistance and a lot less uh, pressure because it's expanding into this larger volume, so they don't go as high. Um, but then we discovered we can actually put glow sticks down that big maw right there and use it more like a mortar. And um, that's what we're going to do. So we've got about 1,500 little glow sticks here. Um, these are the kind you pick up at Target or Michaels, um, here, scan a barcode if you can. But uh, they're, um, yeah, they're 15 per pack and uh, lots of colors, great for parties and fireworks. And so we're gonna launch those um, at, the, at the, our fabulous fireless fireworks display. And uh, that's it for uh, Hackerspace Charlotte and fireworks, I do believe. So if, um, if you have any questions, I guess we can show you. I guess I can, let me go ahead and load this guy up and, uh, and launch for you. And of course I'll keep the video running. Oops, why not? So we'll go with a, a low launch angle. Again, nice and easy. Straight on with the valve. And for indoors, well, I'll come back and pump it in a minute actually. For indoors, um, our main machine, some books and shelves, and a rocket. You didn't make it to the Power Wheels Challenge. We meant to. We're just slackers. What can I say? Some March Jenga. You know, get you to tour the space. A couple 3D printers. You know, Mendel Max, Prussia, something else somebody brought in. All right. So this guy, we'll go ahead and uh, I don't think you can see that. That's uh, right at 20 pounds. And we'll get right behind this rocket. So maybe there's a chance you'll be able to see it. I'll focus far away if I can. There we go in three, two, one. So 20 pounds, this guy will, you know, he'll, he'll cross a room no problem. Um, up at 60 pounds, he'll go 150, 200 feet. Um, so perfect size. Again, same, same articulating everything. Basic button. Um, with the battery taped on, kind of convenient until the battery dies. But really, if, if the kids aren't holding the button, you'll be all right. They can do that all day long. Anyway, that's it.